It's refreshment time, folks. I have to return some videotapes. Are either one of these any good? I don't watch movies. Do you like scary movies, Sydney? You have a TV? No. I just like to read the TV guide. Read the TV guide. I don't need a TV. Books, records, films, these things matter. Call me shallow. It's the fucking truth. Over 1,600 titles. Each were rented just $2 the first night and only a... I don't watch TV. Yeah, but you are aware that there's an invention called television, and on this invention they show shows, right? Tonight on Six Ed World. Okay, I want channels 18, 24, 63, 187, and weather channel. Welcome to the Frog Brothers Podcast with your hosts, Justin and Alec. So I'd just like to point something out. We're in different states when we record this. Uh, and... I just flash back every time that we, before we record, we count down, five, four, three, two, one. And every time we do this, I flash back in my head to Wayne's World when they're learning how to do it. Uh, count down for the TV. Oh, oh, you don't say two or one. But we have to say two or one because it's an audio podcast. But I still think that in my head every time when you do it. You still think I'm wrong every time. I still think, oh, oh, you don't say two or one. And that's the guy from Ghostbusters 2, the mayor's assistant or whatever. Yep. So, welcome to episode number 10 of the Frog Brothers podcast. I am your co-host, Justin, and with me as always, my esteemed colleague, Mr. Alec Cameron West. How's it going? And uh, this is an episode dedicated to Ghostbusters Day. Now, Ghost Corps and Sony officially have postponed... Ghostbusters Day, mostly because of uh, the turmoil going on in the world right now uh, with Black Lives Matter, having all the steam it's got going on, and the COVID situation going. Um, Sony just didn't feel like it was the right time to be celebrating that. Um, so we got a few things we'll talk about on that, but for us, we're still going to celebrate today and kind of look back on our trip to Ghostbusters Fan Fest in L.A. of 2019. So, uh, how's your uh, your uh, life going, Alec? Anything new for you? Um, <clears throat> not just working, getting more collectibles in the mail. Today I uh, hit up the Target that is slightly further away from me, in a couple towns over, and I picked up the uh, all six of the Plasma Series Ghostbusters figures. I had to, uh, I noticed they had the pegs out for him there and so i was like well i better find somebody because they had beast morphers on them beast morphers like the actual morphers themselves for the power rangers beast morphers so i went and found a guy and he's he went and came and scanned it and he was like oh yeah it says there's eight of them and i was like yeah he's like i'll go i'll go grab them for you he came and grabbed four of them for me and he's like i don't know which one you wanted and i was like yeah i want all of them <laughs> i was like yeah i don't need all eight but like i i want all the varieties and uh he went back and grabbed the other two for me so I went out a very happy customer today. Uh, I got some toys in the mail today. I got um, the uh, two of the aliens from Independence Day Trendmasters line, as well as another David. And then I opened up my other David because it was in... David. 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 <laughs> David, why do I just send my mother to Atlanta? David. <gasps> oh, my God. I call my mother. <gasps> oh, my God. <laughs> It's like my well, favorite. So fucking... much of that. <laughs> and there should have been a prototype action figure of him. <laughs> there should have just been an action figure of him. He was important. Yeah. Could have come with a uh, trash receptacle or a recycling or a receptacle. Desk to hide under. Exactly. Just a desk <laughs> and a, a phone. Desk and a phone. <laughs> David, haven't you been watching so, this? <laughs> I finished my Plasma Series Wave One collection the other day. I went to uh, a Target like you. Went through on my lunch break, had to get a few snacks and other goodies there. It's been pretty hot here, so I didn't feel like uh, getting a big meal. So I got some protein bars and some uh, cold beverages to put into cooler. And, of course, had the uh, lady working in the toy aisle go get me the Ghostbusters figures out of the stock room. So I'd already had uh, uh, Peter... 
Gozer, and Dana Barrett. So I had to get Ray, Winston, and Egon today. So or not today, but the other day. So I got all those now. So yeah, uh, looking forward to opening those up, throwing together the build a figure terror dogs. See how that uh, turns out. Yeah, it's it's uh, marketed as specifically Vince Clortho. So. Oh, okay. I feel like I it's possible that you get a Zool attention. figure separate, but I don't know if they would do that as another build a figure or, or not or what. But I feel like if the Plasma series continues, you'll definitely get a Lewis Tully figure. So it's not unheard of that you'd think that you'd get a Zool build a figure also. If it would be slightly different yeah. or not, I don't know. But maybe they just wouldn't do it because well, they look too the same, you know. But based on what we're looking at here, we could possibly have two more. So we could obviously have the Zool Terror Dog and whatever the hell Terror Dog is we saw in the trailer for Afterlife. Oh, yeah. Speaking of Afterlife, watching that trailer again, I think <clears throat> it's very obvious, I think, that Gruberson is going to be the key master. Because they you show think that... it's going to be that easy? I... I almost do, because in that trailer, there's that fucking scene with the keys all dangling and shit, and you're like, oh, it's Keymaster. And he's not necessarily in that scene, but I feel like they show that, and then they show clips of Paul Rudd, and you're like, uh, I don't know. But, yeah, that could just be the cut. Only time will tell. Yeah, but I, the Ghostbusters, I don't think, is going to go the way in the trailer of, like, Avengers, where they're going to change shit or try to fuck with you or anything. Because it's still, like, no, not like they just showed that much in, that. in there. No, there's just enough in that trailer for you to know that, hey, this is a, a true sequel, so. Yeah, it's just cool. But since it is Ghostbusters Day unofficially now, but every other year besides this year will be the official date, I was going to run down a few things here that I thought were pretty cool that were going on in the world today for Ghostbusters Day, so uh, just bear with me. So Ecto Supply Co. or company is a, a new little Ghostbusters themed shop that's launched today. Uh, they're on the Instagram, so at Ecto Supply Co., ectosupplyco.com. They're selling stickers and prints of some different types of Ghostbusters artwork, so pretty cool. Some of it's some stuff you may have kind of seen similar before, um, but definitely something to check out if you're looking for good new Ghostbusters stuff to buy. Hey, that's news to me, so I'm going to check it out. Fright Rags is launching their second series of Ghostbusters stuff on the 9th tomorrow. It was originally supposed to launch last Friday. However, they delayed it till Tuesday. They said they wanted to get caught up on some of their existing orders, and they didn't want to bombard themselves with a bunch of stuff for Ghostbusters Day until they had some of those other orders out. So, totally understand that. And they announced that after the change to postponing Ghostbusters Day. Uh, so there's an artist that does Can't Be Contained art, and he does uh, some music mashups of, you know, like a Ghostbusters catching Prince in a ghost trap, things like that. So I have the one of the Blues Brothers version he's done of that, some other pins and stuff of his. And he did a Terror on the Green series. Not available online, you will need to direct message him due to the Tavern on the Green not understanding parody and fair use laws. So message him direct if you're interested in any of those. He's got coasters, buttons, and uh, patches available, I do believe. So I've got a whole set of it all coming because I thought it was a pretty cool one-off idea there, a good little parody. So instead of Tavern on the Green, Terror on the Green, and you see the Terror Dog on there kind of spoofing their regular logo there. So pretty cool stuff. Nice. And then the incredibly talented John Yerkeba did an art auction earlier tonight to benefit Black Lives Matter, so he sold off some of his original artwork, uh, Ghostbusters themed, of course, and uh, if you went to FanFest, you saw plenty of his art around. He was selling art. You got a free print that he uh, had made that includes the Ghostbusters 1, Ghostbusters 2, Ghostbusters the video game. Did you... Um, um, so you got you, you got your map and catalog recently, right? I did. So me being an idiot, 
at the time, I did not get my FanFest catalog when we were there. Well, see, there was. I think you just got gypped because I mine was in the bag they gave me. Ah. And I think yours just didn't have the, in the bag, I think, is what the deal was. But well, I think they had they, huge uh, tables of them in front of the... Uh, in front of the pop-up stores that were like basically right as you walked in oh, into the yeah. plaza there. So the uh, sneaker shop had those right in front of it. And I didn't grab one. I was like, I'll grab one of those later because I didn't want to bend it. And never found them again that day. Yeah, so um, what's interesting about that is <clears throat> I was listening to one of the old Yes Have Some podcasts earlier this week. You know, shout out to them, I guess. But uh, <laughs> it's funny. They mentioned uh, it was. I was listening to some of their fan fest coverage from last year, and uh, just kind of hyping on Ghostbusters this week. But I forgot that they had uh, John had drawn them into the map. So if you look on the map, you can see all three of them posing for a picture in front of Vigo. It's really, really small, but you can see it on there. Oh, yeah, John's great about throwing Easter eggs in on there. Uh, speaking of John, so I do have a custom commissioned artwork piece coming from him now that he's done with his school. So congratulations on your art degree, John. Looking forward to seeing what you do out in the world with it. Yep, we are big supporters. So speaking of YHS, so we consider them our peers in the podcast world, pioneers in the uh pop culture Ghostbusters mix up along with the interdimensional cross rip but uh, yes have some actually used Cameo to book an appearance with Kevin Smith over the weekend they posted that in their group therapy which is pretty awesome so he talks about um, knowing Jason Reitman and just telling us that the movie's going to be in good hands and yeah, uh, it was pretty cool to see that they were supporting that and um, Kevin was actually matching all of his fees that he collected for doing cameo over the weekend and donating that to the NAACP. So uh, it's pretty awesome to see people out there doing good things for good causes they believe in and, you know, being focused on being socially just and uh, helping those out there in the community. So for definitely sure. love all the support and, and the love we're seeing out there in our, our community there. Yeah. yeah and the last kind of big advertisement piece I wanted to touch on was the uh, Cleaning Up the Town documentary. We still haven't seen an official North America release, or United States release anyway. Canada has already had theirs, those lucky those lucky folks up there that we were kindly referred to as America's Hat. Yeah, we could probably buy so, it, though, from Canada and ship it here. I don't know how expensive it would be, but Canada is the same region well, as ours. Um, so I believe they are region-free at least the ones that I've seen for pre-sale. So Amazon has a pre-sale. It's about $30. And I was browsing on FYE to see if they had any of their 35th anniversary merch clearance on site. Yeah. And uh, I didn't see any of that there, but I did see they have a pre-order for $28.99. They have uh, Cleaning Up the Town documentary listed. So I hit up the Buenos, who uh, produced and uh, created the documentary directly, and they said that they thought that was a UK import, that they haven't, um, finalize their North America plans yet, so uh, still in the cards there. Hopefully we'll see something <laughs> soon. So if you're seeing those pre-releases and stuff online, it says that those are likely UK imports, so should be able to play for you just fine, but if you think $30 is a little steep, it's because it's an import, so I'm imagining we're probably closer to a $20 price point once we actually see a North America release. Oh, it's going to be like a almost 10-year-old documentary, I feel like, by the time we see it. At least some of the footage. <laughs> well, it's uh, it it's been in process for a long time, so that's good, though. I mean, I think uh, Chris Stewart's in there from Interdimensional Cross Rip, and I think he even make jokes about how like how different he looks now. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> so we're going to kind of do a recap here and just talk about our favorite memories of Fan Fest, and uh, we'll break it down with some stuff that was not Fan Fest related, but we were in L.A., so what do you think a couple of people that love movies do in L.A.? Well, we toured some movie sites, of course. 
I think we each had a couple of our own ideas about ones we wanted to see before we came. Um, we each made up at least a couple, I think you and me at least made up uh, a list of five or six places we wanted to go try to see. Yeah, I'd, I'd put together and print it off and sa- saved with all the addresses in advance and kind of talked to everybody. Um, so it was you, my friend Tony, you know, uh, Tony I grew up with, one of my close friends, a longtime Ghostbusters fan, just as long as a fan as I've been, so uh, always been a kindred spirit there. Some of our other friends like Ghostbusters, but uh, Tony and I have, have this uh, other level of fandom with it and much like you do now alex so right um we were all texting back and forth about places we wanted to go and see for movies and so um definitely made that happen so i mean when we first got there we went straight to basically our hotel which uh i believe this was your idea and you booked it so i let you kind of tell them about that So I remember uh, a long time ago, I took a trip to New York, right? And specifically after watching something about the Tribeca Film Festival, and they're like, hey, Tribeca's where the Ghostbusters Firehouse is. So then immediately I was like, oh, shit, I'm going to New York, and I'm going to Tribeca. (laughs) And so when I was there, I saw a bunch of Ghostbusters sites. So then when I was thinking like, hey, we're going to L.A. for Fan Fest, and just through all the research and reading and books and commentaries and the internet, you know, you find out so much about Ghostbusters, so found out that the Biltmore Hotel that they filmed the scenes um, while they're catching Slimer, and uh, later the scenes, that's the staircase where, where do these stairs go? They go up. Was filmed there as well. So I had the brilliant idea that, hey, we should just go stay there. Yep. So we booked that for all four nights. Now in hindsight, they're a little steep. Their parking prices were fucking absurd so if you ever go out there i would recommend staying there for a night just to check it out you know sleep here stay here tonight you know and uh do that whole bit but definitely uh a unique experience out there so that was the first thing it was like okay we're going out there for fan fest we're gonna stay where they shot the movie yep and uh, i know a lot of people visited there but and i know some other fans stayed there too but not uh, not as many as you'd think. Probably just because of the price, though. Fan Fest was already expensive. It's expensive to travel to L.A. Flights, like you said, all, the whole thing was expensive. So, but uh, worth it. Yeah. Oh, definitely, definitely worth the investment there. Um, like I said, if if you're ever gonna go out there, stay there like one night and stay somewhere else just to experience it, because um, you can see everything you need to see there in one night. Yeah. But it was pretty cool because. On June 7th was uh, the day they did uh, the Ghostbusters screening at the Globe Theater. And that was basically just a few blocks from the Biltmore. So everyone was able to walk down there. Which um, we should mention that uh, before we walked down there, I think that morning, was that when we went to uh, Pat and Lorraine's? Or was that the next day? Yeah, so I, think I we guess went we'll, Pat we'll go in. Cr- well, let's jump in chronological order. So on June sixth, uh, Tony and I uh, jumped on a plane, flew out to L.A. Alec got in his car and drove up from uh, Phoenix, where he's living at the time. And I hadn't seen you in what five years, I think. At It'd least been a long time, like absurdly long time. Yeah, just from you living in a different spot and me having kids and doing other stuff, and yeah, just life just didn't work out that we could see each other, which is crazy considering how close we are. I mean, we spoke on the phone all the time and kept in touch, but we just hadn't been in the same room as each other in five years, so. Right. You uh, drove and picked us up there, and then immediately you were out there in that, and out there in L.A. It's kind of an overcast day when we got there, right? And that's not normally what you'd expect, so. Yeah. It was interesting. Kind of nice. It was uh, ridiculous driving through LAX to pick you guys up, but hey, what are you going to do? We uh, Yeah, I remember when we landed, we texted you and said, hey, like, hey, we're here. And you're like, okay, uh, I'll be there in an hour. And you're like, okay. And we're like, how far out are you? You're like, about a mile and a half or two miles. <laughs> <laughs> right. It was, it was like literally just 
stopped where you were at. Yeah, so uh, you know, we went and checked out the hotel, swagged out. We tried on our gear, unpacked a little bit. I think we went and uh, had dinner then at uh, Veggie Grill. There the was Veggie one Grill, right around yeah, the block. All, all vegan restaurant type of a fast food place, which uh, I made the transition to mostly... Uh, vegan vegetarian last fall so last september but that that was one of the first things i'd done i was like okay yeah you know that you can have some really good stuff there and make this work so yeah i had heard kevin smith talk about it a lot and i was just like man i want to fucking eat there and there was one super close we literally was in the same block that we were on so we just had to walk around it so that was cool yeah and then we also saw the uh Tall Tower. I'm not even sure what the building's called that they have an Independence Day where everyone's going up onto the roof. Oh, and it's they, the, uh, oh. what is it, IMB Bank or something? I don't know the bank company, yeah. but it's a bank building, yeah. Yeah, so. The that LA building that's destroyed that. from Independence Day. And I was like, I was looking at it and I was pretty sure, like, hey, isn't that the fucking building in Independence Day? And I think you were like, you know what? I think it is. And I Googled it and sure enough, it was. So that was cool. Yep, that was pretty badass. So, what we did the next day was we kind of got up. Um, oh, actually, before so f- I think we went to the we went to the hotel that night. Actually, didn't we? And uh, somebody organ somebody else's hotel. There were a bunch of people were staying. Kind of had oh, like yeah, a little get together. Yes, together. have some. Yeah, yeah. Yes, have some was kind of hosting a get together in the hotel lobby over there and. There's a lot of people in there, a really loud conversation, and, um, you know, the hotel was surprisingly okay with it, I think, just by the number of people that were actually staying there, so that was pretty cool. Uh, we didn't really talk to everyone a whole lot then. We are kind of in our, kind of in the zone at the time, but uh, it's definitely fun going there and, and seeing everybody. Yeah. So the next day, we got up and did some sightseeing, and uh, the first thing we did when we got up, before we wanted to drive anywhere, was we wanted to hit up the L.A. Firehouse. Yep. So, we did what anyone that's sane would do, is we fucking walked down to Skid Row. Down on Skid but, Row. Now, I've heard people say, like, oh, you shouldn't go down there and this or that, and, uh, you know, you're tattooed, I'm tattooed. Like, just no fucks given. I wasn't worried about any of that bullshit. No, no. The as as people act on like Skid Row are fucking there. cool as shit to us. Of course, anywhere there oh, are yeah. crazy people, but... There was literally a guy that was like, I think he pointed out that you were wearing a Kansas City hat. And then he chatted yeah, us he up for a minute, and then he was just like, man, make sure you smoke some of that good good while you're here. Yeah. And then... No, uh, so, I mean, yeah. you can get along with anybody if you're out there and just vibing, right? So we didn't walk around looking like we're a bunch of fucking people that were in some place we shouldn't be. Um, it was pretty cool seeing the outside of the firehouse. I would have loved to have been able to go inside, but, you know, it's... Uh, condemned at the moment. They're still working on turning that into some sort of an arts house um, for the community out there, which would be really cool because that's a very historical landmark there anyway. So Yeah, it has a lot of... Um, not only was it used as the in, inside of the firehouse for Ghostbusters and stuff, but it was also used for uh, movies like David Lynch's Lost Highway and... Um, let's see. Jim Carrey's The Mask was the, the car's where he's having his car worked on. The mechanic shop was also down in there. Oh, yeah. And, and it's so- also featured in Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah, that's what I was going to say, Big Trouble in Little China. There's something in there. I can't remember what it is, though. Yep, and then even in Ghostbusters 2, you don't realize it, but the Ghostbusters, the birthday party that Jason Reitman's featured in was actually shot inside the firehouse on the second, on the one of the upper floors there. That's funny. So, like, it's an actual living space, and that's kind of what they had it decked out as for that. So, got to love the magic of the movies. Yeah. So then after that, we went cruising around town, man. We uh, went and checked out some sites. Yeah. Um, there was, um, I think, one of the first ones we hit up. We kind of planned it so we could, uh, we mapped it around the city so we could drive because some of them were pretty far away. So it was like we would hit them in order. We mapped it out. And um, Yeah, I think we made it so we made a loop to go there and get back in time for the uh, movie screening that night. And we did a damn good job of getting back in time and still having time to just catch up with people in our hotel lobby and then walk down to the Globe Theater. Yeah. Um, 
I can't remember exact what order we, we went to places, but uh, we'll just talk about Pat and Lorraine's first. That's where we had breakfast, which is uh, also where the Reservoir Dogs have breakfast in Reservoir Dogs. And uh, yep, that place and that was pretty badass. Was awesome. Yeah, it looked pretty much Very the cool. same. There was a couple, you know, differences here and there, paint jobs and stuff, but you could still tell from like. Some of the molding and was the same, like the ground molding and stuff, and then the the bricks and stuff like that. You could you could easily see where things were and where they were when they shot that. So that was cool. Yep. And so our friend Tony was supposed to join us on this podcast tonight, but he actually works in video production, and uh, he got back to work finally after being off for some downtime due to COVID and everything else. So uh, obviously can't blame that man for going out there and getting back to work. So. Um, mm-hmm. but he was along with the trip for us and, you know, he loves Reservoir Dogs as well. So, I mean, Tony and I would always bounce movies off each other back and forth in junior high when we became friends. And, you know, Reservoir Dogs is one of those ones we always watched and talked about a lot. And we, hell, we even did a scene out of Reservoir Dogs that we had to edit all the profanity out of. Uh, but we did that for one of our acting classes. So it's pretty cool to be able to do that and. Yeah, go see awesome. one of those spots that we had idolized and talked about. So, excellent spot. The food there was pretty good, too. I was uh, pretty impressed. Yeah. Good breakfast stuff. Good coffee, even. <laughs> and so then after that, I believe we went to Marty's house from Back to the Future. Yeah, I think that's where we went next. That was uh, really was cool. excellent. To see the whole street and there and everything. Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing to go out there and be there right and you know you can tell they're used to just having people come by you know no one really thought anything of us being out there you know it's a famous film site so yeah uh everyone was pretty cool with it but did some selfies got some videos of everything going on out there so that was a good time to see that and just to see that in person was pretty amazing yeah that was terrific i uh enjoyed marty's house pulled the car in the driveway and backed it out <laughs> yep and then you drove down the street so like you know we had a I think I told you to do that. I was like, hey man, if you're here with your car, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to drive this thing like Doc Brown. Right. So that was pretty cool and geeking out over that. And then uh where did we go from there? I was pretty sure we went to Nancy's. Yeah, from a nightmare on Elm Street, we went up to Nancy's place. Yeah. That was and awesome. that was awesome. Like that still looks almost identical on the outside. They've done a good job of keeping that looking how it is. And it's funny. Um, we did notice there was a ring doorbell out there, though, so I'm sure they saw all kinds of... Well, they probably see people there all the time anyway, but we did run into some other fans that were at FanFest at uh, Marty's house, so I'm sure there was people doing the same thing we were the whole weekend, was just, like, going around and checking everything out. Oh, yeah. I, um... Well, it's funny. In front of Nancy's house, we were filming a little bit for my old YouTube channel, and, uh, we had, uh... You know, I was using your PKE meter, and I was, like, joking around in front of their house, and then uh, they pulled up into the driveway as I was finishing up, and was like, oh, that was awkward. But they didn't yeah, say anything. They didn't seem to fun. care. They were probably like, whatever. Yeah. I'm sure they're used to that, right? You don't get into a house that's that famous and not be okay with it, right? Right. And then we try to go by a high school that was uh, used in Nightmare on Elm Street and a bunch of other movies, but they had it covered up. Um, trying to I forget the name of the place. Yeah, I can't remember but either. But if you saw a picture, they're of it, doing you'd, exterior. You'd realize, oh yeah, yeah that's every high school I've seen and everything from in the eighties and nineties and early two thousands. Yeah, the, the list is like insane for like what's been shot there, and it looks like they're doing exterior restoration out there because they had some like giant netting kind of covering the whole thing up. So. Yeah, we couldn't, couldn't get... really see it, but um, pretty iconic anyway. Yeah, it was still cool to kind of go buy it. So we uh, saw some sights, and then we uh, headed back to uh, the Biltmore. Actually, and... uh, was that? Oh, yeah, that is when we headed back to the Biltmore. We did a couple other things the other, the last day, also. Yep. So we headed back to the Biltmore ran into a gigantic group of other Ghostbusters fans that were there, because like I said, it was within a walking distance, so 
yeah. a lot of people that didn't stay there were going to go check it out because, you know, you could Uber in or drive in or whatever else and check the Biltmore out and then go um, walk down to the Globe Theater. Yeah. So I don't know where you and Tony were at. You guys both disappeared, I think, up to the room for a little bit when uh, my friend Jerry, Jerry lives in town. He's part of the Midland Empire Ghostbusters as well. He was out there, and uh, I met him at the bar down at the Biltmore, and then we ran into a bunch of other people. So you guys weren't in this gigantic photo of like 50, probably 50 other fans that were there, and Chris Stewart was kind of doing a uh, kind of a walkthrough of everything that you know had been shot in the movie there. So, Yeah. And, uh, I think, you know, I remember where I was during this. <laughs> I went to the dispensary. That was the closest walking distance. <laughs> and I bought oh, myself right. some, uh, herbal refreshments as well as a, well, an herbal refreshment beverage to, yeah. uh, consume before we headed down to the screening. So that was glorious. That, yeah, so uh, it was beverage was quite tasty and uh, made for a very fun evening. I'm sure. <laughs> so it was pretty wild seeing all those people down there um, and just getting to interact with all those fans because there's fans from all over, right? And if you're in the Ghostbusters community, like a lot of us all follow each other's groups online, on Instagram, on Facebook, and so many of us are friends now, right? You know, yeah. you want to find out like where the Ghostbusters fans are, update your Facebook um, profile picture to a picture of you in a Ghostbusters uniform, and the requests will come flooding in. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. It's amazing so how many that, I, people added me just days after FanFest when my, I had changed my profile, and everybody was kind of just, the community was surging a bit, you know, and having a good time then, so. Absolutely. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. So then uh, we walked down to the Globe Theater, and you know, we kind of check it out, and from a, you know, from across the street, you can see that the uh, the Arizona Ghostbusters had their ecto parked out there. Yeah, and that was pretty cool to see. So they got to park right on the street in front of it. So of course, you know, they got some up close and personal stuff. And then we're walking through, and uh, you know, our friend Jerry was like a class class ten or whatever, so he was able to get in and, and get in early. So. We caught up with him on the line, and then he went inside, and we didn't see him till like, we went and waited in line for, like, an hour. Yeah. And the line wrapped all the way around the damn building. Yeah, it was pretty crazy. Which, uh, that yeah, that was pretty wild. But it was fun. But going in there, man, like, it was just, it was electric just to have, like, the energy in the room, right? Everyone there was, like, in good spirits and in a great mood. Um. But as there always are in these things, you know, there's little things that, you know, run off the tracks. So the the funniest thing there was, you know, they had this uh, ecto cooler or crystal head vodka drink they were selling, right? At whatever they had, they had the drink two of them, yeah. on the menu. Yeah, and so, you know, they sold out like of uh, the crystal school vodka like super quick, and all the bars are out of it. So kind of funny seeing that, you know, because they've got this specialty drink on there, and they didn't plan ahead for everybody ordering that. So. Yeah, I think they were like 15 bucks a piece, and I had one. I had the Slimer one. I think it was like a sour apple flavored. I mean, it wasn't bad, but it was just like, all right, I'm going to have one just because it's Ghostbusters Fest. But I had like already had yeah. that <laughs> THC drink too, so I was already like, woo. Yeah, no, it was definitely a good time. So, And then everyone was just talking to everybody that, that they knew and was just meeting new people, so... You know, I said hi to the Yes Have Some crew just because I've been basically listening to their podcast since they launched and Interdimensional Cross Rips kind of the same way. And, you know, I'd always followed uh, Chris and Troy from their websites, Proton Charging and Ghostbusters HQ. So just seeing those people in person was pretty sweet. And then um, when we were there talking, I've, I'd read like all oh, the whole IDW series of Ghostbusters comics. And so I saw Eric Burnham and Dan Choning. Uh, standing around up there at their table by themselves so i went up and chatted with those guys for a little bit and those guys are class acts man like they're so awesome and uh told us to come find them the next day and uh they autographed my copy of uh ghostbusters the ultimate visual history yeah i was uh kind of lazy and i was like i would like one thing i can just gather all these autographs in so all the autographs i got at fan fest i had uh put in that one copy of the book 
pretty cool. Yep, and then of course, you know, the movie comes on eventually after it gets a crazy introduction from uh, Ivan Reitman, Dan Aykroyd, and they brought up all the cast that they basically had in town for it. So William Atherton was up there too, and Ernie Hudson, yeah. Yeah, Ernie Hudson too. Yeah, so everyone was there. It was pretty awesome to see Jason them do an intro to your favorite movie. Yeah. Of course, the movie kicks off, and like you know, we're all drinking, getting our buzz on. You know, I think everyone kind of was. So like, it's just like I said, the energy there was just unreal. Like the the positive, it was like it's like the positive energy in that room alone could have like helped the Statue of Liberty. And Ghostbusters, too. I mean, we could have cracked the slime shell on the Manhattan Museum of Art. So, oh, yeah. And uh, everyone quoted along with it, man. It was just unreal. And then they had some really cool stuff in there, too. Like, they had some Playmobil stuff. They were one of the big sponsors at the time because they had a, a lot of their product was out. Yeah. They had little New York police department, little barricades up in there just for good photo ops and stuff like that. So it was really well done in there. The screen was kind of small, right, since it was a actual theater, right? So you could probably see touring bands there and in different events and such. Yeah. So it wasn't like a movie theater type screen. It was projected. So the video quality wasn't amazing. The sound was insane because they had, like, basically a professional PA in there. Um, but, I mean... They had extra lights and stuff that were synced up with the whole movie and stuff, like strobes and yeah, different the, flashing lights and stuff. And, um... On the whole, you know, watching it, the picture wasn't great. The experience was great. So, yeah, exactly right. And we'd all we've all seen the movie so many times. The the picture quality wasn't the focus there. It was the atmosphere. It I was. was yeah. I mean, shit. We could have just. I mean, the room had was, people act out the movie on stage. Really. <laughs> yeah, I mean, everyone was basically quoting along anyway. On top of that, killer sound they had in there. So it was. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. Yeah, um, I was going to say. I don't think we mentioned this yet, but we also, uh, on our YouTube, we have a 15-minute video of our coverage from Ghostbusters Fan Fest. It's a lot of clips of, uh, there's like probably five minutes of footage of this first night at the theater and Dan Aykroyd and everybody on stage and a little bit of the, the crowd and stuff like that. So be sure to go check that out. Be uh, a good pair with this podcast. Yeah, if you want to see what it looked like there, check it out. It was pretty amazing. So then after um, after the movie let out, you know, originally they'd talked about showing both movies, and then by the time I think they did that, I think they just, you know, they didn't show the second one after all, which is fine because it was getting late enough that, uh, you know, we went out and hit the food trucks, kind of checked some things out, checked out a bar next door and had a drink there, and then we went on another adventure and... um checked out a site from Ghostbusters 2. Yep. Uh, it's okay, Lewis. We were arrested at night. <laughs> so we went down at night where they're actually digging into the uh, digging into the street in Ghostbusters 2 to find the River of Slime. Hey. So. Why are you cutting? I got a major gas leak over there. Where do you think all this is coming from? The sky? Hey. You're not with Con Ed or the phone company. So tell me another one. Yeah, so that was that was cool though. We had a little trouble finding the exact spot. I feel like at first, but I think we ended up finding it, and we got yeah, photos in one or two different some... spots. So regardless, <laughs> yeah. So I think we found it a little later on because we were kind of comparing. Because I had downloaded both movies to my phone through my Voodoo account or my Movies Anywhere account, yeah. so I could like pull them up and check them out when we're doing sightseeing to kind of compare and contrast and see like what was what. And yeah, we actually found it and got it right. So at first we were a little off, and then uh, through some spirited. Uh, inebriated debating we finally found the correct spot so yeah there's photos of me standing in the middle of the street pretending like i'm running a jackhammer in the road um you know you were drunk and you're like i'm gonna photoshop in a jackhammer later <laughs> and i never did so maybe i'll do that next year maybe i'll do that to commemorate the anniversary be hilarious yeah so then after that i think we just wound up going back to the uh, uh hotel so that was pretty cool yeah because we didn't want to have like such a, a crazy all nighter since the next day was the big day, so Yep. Yeah, we went to bed. Woke up. Woke up, geared up, then went down 
to Ghostbusters Fan Fest on the Sony Studio Pictures lot. That was quite the and time. It was awesome. For going down to a, an event like that, I mean, we parked super close in the parking garage. It was really easy to get through. Right, Getting like, through security was a little ridiculous because we all had our various forms of our proton packs. Um, yeah, yeah. And it was crazy seeing all the all the packs and like all the hard work everyone's done in there. Like, so I at that point in time, I just had a Spirit proton pack that I'd put a full size wand I'd built on it, and uh, wore that around. But before I'd even gone to FanFest, I'd uh, got the Innovos Proton Pack kit and started working on that. So I knew I had another full-size pack I was going to be working on when we got back there. But seeing all those packs in person was like, holy shit. It's pretty wild. Like, it's what everyone wanted as a kid. You're like, you know, you got an extra one of those Proton Packs? My kid brother really wants one. Well, that's what that whole fucking thing felt like. (laughs) Yeah, pretty much. Walking around everywhere there. And so we all geared up and we went out in our flight suits and our packs and... I'd say there was more people than not that were fully geared up. Um, We didn't dress up the night before. You know, we just kind of went street clothes just to be comfortable for the movie screening, whatever else we're doing, so. Yeah. Uh, It was was kind of overwhelming at first when we got there, just looking around at everything and just being wowed because there was a lot of different setups. There was like a, you know, there's that giant inflatable Stay Puft. There was a Arizona Ghostbusters had set up a big setup right near the entrance, as well as all the other people who had driven out their own custom Ectos and stuff. Yeah, I got photos of every single one of those Ectos that was out there, because, like, it was insane how many groups were able to bring their stuff out there and get set up. Yeah, it was cool. And that was pretty impressive. But going through the line, that was the one thing. I mean, this was a Wizard World event, so I'd never dealt with Wizard World. Our local Comic-Con in Kansas City is, like, a locally owned production, and to be honest with you, man, they set like unrealistic expectations for other events I've been to, uh, just because they manage their business so well. Yeah. So it was kind of crazy getting out there and seeing like what happened. But I mean, for the most part, it was amazing. But there's still things you're like, ah, they could have done that better. But a one-off event, what do you expect? Uh, yeah. So. I think the biggest problem I had is just that it was so packed that um, with events. That was kind of like you had to really pick and choose what you wanted to do because you were not going to be able to do everything. Yeah, and so for my my package, I think I got a class three, whatever. So they wound up giving me a, a an Ivan Reitman, Jason Reitman photo op. And that's the same package Tony had. And I think you wound up getting one of the deals like kind of last minute just because you were kind of on the fence about if you're going to be able to make the trip or not. So yeah. um, you kind of waited till last minute, which is fine, but... We spent way too long waiting in the photo op line, right? We missed so many panels over this, and our call time on there was way wrong. You know, they were still trying to get caught up from everything else, and so yeah, um, pretty crazy stuff there. So I will tell you a story, though. Um, so Jerry from the Midland Empire Ghostbusters was there, and he did the Class 10, so he did the breakfast with everybody, and he said that um, Maurice LaMarche came out and had breakfast at his table with it, and then he realized he was the only talent that actually came out to have breakfast, and they were supposed to come out and mingle after everyone had finished their food, so it was pretty wild. He said it was pretty cool that he uh, had got to have breakfast with him and just have some one-on-one time just chatting with him about everything, so. I mean, yeah, that is cool, because that's what you'd think a breakfast would be. Yeah, and for me, like, I'd just seen Maurice at Planet Comic Con in Kansas City a few months before because he was there. So, or no, maybe that was the year before, but I'd had his autograph and met him before, and he was super nice guy. So when we saw him on site there, uh, he's fucking hilarious. So he cracked us up because we were over by the food trucks, which you kind of had to go way out of your way for. And I was getting some ice cream, like an ice cream shake or something, and he was like looking at the menu and just talking with us, casually talking with us, and he cracked me up because he... uh he looks at the menu and like thinks about it for a minute, kind of debates it, and then he grabs his bill and he's like, "I really don't need that." <laughs> well, so this is after he, I, I was kind of just like nervous and like, uh, I want to ask him for a picture, so I asked him for a picture. We got the picture, and he uh, he wanted to see it, so I turned it around and we're looking at the picture, and that's when he looks at himself, and he goes, "Oh, I don't need ice cream." <laughs> 
And I was like, oh. Yeah. I'm, a little I, self-deprecating humor, which is, it's funny because, like, when you see these people that you've idolized or you appreciate or anything like that, just seeing them be, like, real humans with you is just so reassuring that you're like, yeah, you know, he just like everybody else. He just has a cool job. Yep. So that was pretty awesome. Yeah, he's a class act and an awesome guy. I got his, uh, he was doing autographs for free, which would have been nice to know in advance. Um, him and Dave Couillet were signing stuff for free at the end of the, it was like 20 minutes before we got ice cream. And yeah, he was but there. And uh, I ended up getting him, f- to, he signed my uh, Ghostbusters hat I had, so. But I did not get yeah, K- so Dave the- Couillet because he had already packed up. Well, we missed out on a bunch of that stuff, mostly because I bought a pair of the Slimer shoes, and is that what you got, was the Slimer shoes? Yeah. Yeah, so if you bought the Slimer shoes, Dan Aykroyd would sign them for free. So after we waited an insane line for the Reitman photo op, and like we were damn near the end of that line. There was very few people after us. Yeah. Um, because they had, there was some confusion about it. They had the line coming from two directions. They were calling for people for like group photo ops and other stuff. So that's where they really dropped the ball was the lines and the line management and the time management. So we also waited in line for Dan Aykroyd for shoes for a while, and Video Bald was in front of us and was bragging. He's like, oh, you guys are going to have to wait. You have to wait a little while for me because I bought all these shoes. Right. And of course, that guy, your opinion of him is your own, but uh, he's got a questionable reputation. I'll let you figure that out on your own end. But You knew who he was? I just thought it was... What's that? You're saying you knew who that guy was? Yeah, his his name's Video. Well, he calls himself Video Bob, but I call him Video Bald. So. Oh, I was going to say, because, uh, yeah, I totally thought that guy was a dick, so. Oh, he was. Yeah, he's a total jerk. And then the way he acted like he was so cool about it, and then he was basically flipping those shoes for a huge profit on, on eBay, basically, immediately, so. Yeah, I mean. Um, but like I said, I don't want to get too into that. Just He's got his own reputation that he's made just by being himself as a human, so. He can deal with that on his own. <laughs> but I just thought it was scuzzy that he was in front of us and, like, bragging how long he's going to be there because he is going to have all these shoes signed. You're like, uh, okay. Like, I could max out my credit card and do the same thing you're doing, but, right. you know, I, I don't want to do that. It's like he wasn't going to be able to carry those either. He would have, like, had to have several people with him to help him. He had that many. Like, he probably had 10 or 20 fucking pairs. Yeah, I think he talked him into holding them to the side for him, which is asinine for an autograph thing right you know there's people in line waiting to do stuff so yeah like that just put us even farther behind in line after all that stuff got done so one cool thing that happened though uh, we are walking and we randomly this is what's cool about walking on the sony lot where people actually work there's not really you know we were on the back lot so there when the celebrities are walking around they're kind of just walking around and you see uh all of a sudden paul feig walks by us and i'm like holy shit and I impulsively yell out, I love you, Paul, because uh, <clears throat> we won't get into this too much, but uh, we have no, pretty much no hate for Answer the Call here. Uh, we appreciate it. We, you know, obviously it's not the original film, but uh, it wasn't really trying to be, and it has its place. We won't, you know, dwell on this all day, but I like Paul Feig. I love Paul Feig uh, for Freaks and Geeks, his appearance in Heavyweights work on the office he's just a legendary class act and he was super nice and as soon as i uh, yeah. yelled out i love you paul he turned around met had eye contact with me and mouthed thank you and then we caught up with him and uh we got yeah and then we then we chatted with him for a minute right i uh yeah. so there's another company i'll give a shout out to real quick proton pins on instagram they have an etsy shop they sell some really badass stuff um so they have one that says it's like a jaws poster rip off but it's a pen that says never compare me to the mayor of jaws yeah and so i showed paul that pen and like he appreciated that you know and uh had a good moment with him yeah and if anything you know he's the he's a stand-up guy really fucking polite really just took the time with it and you could tell like the handlers that were with him and the family were with him were kind of like hey don't do that and you know for like for him i think it was important that like people were there being respectful and being nice to him yeah, there's things about his movie I don't think are amazing, but at the same time, taking the energy to hate stuff and like just be rude and disrespectful about it is wasteful. And the way he carries himself and presents himself, 
a lot of the fans that had the negative energy about him could learn from him just on like how to behave and be a decent person because yep he's I a fucking stand up guy that was, was one of the highlights there was just talking to him i mean paul feig had the courage to make a third ghostbusters film not the third ghostbusters i mean but you know another ghostbusters movie so now thanks to him we're going to have four ghostbusters movies in a year instead of just three or just two even so. Yeah, and Jason Reitman even, you know, during the director's panel, gave the shout out. It was like, hey, you know, if Paul hadn't done what he had done, someone had to make that first one and like break the ice for what twenty. I don't know, so that'd have been thirty years, or no, twenty five years, around, give or take, for twenty sixteen, since Ghostbusters two. Yeah. So he had to do the dirty work and take on that job, and you know, I can see why he wanted to go a different angle and do his own thing with it and yeah jason wright was like look you know if you hadn't done that you know you pioneered this to be able to happen again like i wouldn't be able to do what i'm doing now had you not done your leg work first so pretty yep. awesome yep that was solid solid guy like him a lot and uh missed out on a lot of panels but we did see some of the director's panel there and then of course we were there for the um uh, lost film footage that they found and showed and that was which uh, is pretty cool one of the best highlights of that too just seeing those clips and them being introduced by jason and ivan together yeah and i still think we're going to see a lot more of that in the movie for some different different scenes so you know one thing we already fi figured out was in the afterlife trailer um you know they got some youtube footage you know like oh from the 80s like your, your parents never told you about new york in the 80s and that right. kind of thing, and uh, you see these alternate camera angles that work perfect for, like, a YouTube shoot, you know, like somebody finding video there because it's angles of something we know, and it's just a different angle, so it works really well to tell the story that there's a bunch of people there actually taking video and photo and stuff of all that, these events as they happen. So I was really about to say, I think it might have seeing... been looked like a news video on YouTube that they're watching even, like a vintage news clip. I can't remember yeah, off the so top of my head, but... Yeah, so I'm just excited to see how he incorporates all that on there. But then alternate takes, too. Like, we saw some really funny stuff that I'm assuming will probably hit some sort of home release, maybe at some point in time. Um, but as we kind of shift away from physical media, we'll see what happens with that. Um, because the Ghostbusters 1 and 2 4K Steelbook release was very limited in its run. It's very expensive now to get. So um, if you don't have it, I would highly recommend getting it because... It's basically pretty damn excellent. It's got the nice classic looking cover art, none of the blue or the green slime looking stuff that you always see like in the cheapy bins now. So Yeah. And then we gotta see the uh Spirit Halloween full size terror dog was there. Eagle Moss was there and they're doing their uh build the ecto-1 so if you listen to interdimensional crossword right now they're working on building that and talking about it on their episodes which has been a lot of fun to hear um they had a pretty badass print book that i've got that just has amazing photos of their replica of the ecto yeah and speaking of the ecto you know when we're on the sony lot we got to go check out ghost core and check out the ecto-1 that's right in front of that and uh, the Ecto-1 from Answer the Call. So being able to see both of those movie cars up and in person was insane. Yeah. Like, that, holy shit. That was a dream. It was like one of those things, yeah. like, there, there's so many things that were cool about that day and weekend, but, you know, think about them individually, and you're like, God damn, that would have been a, just a dope day seeing that on its own. Absolutely. And then somebody there i'm not sure which uh franchise this car was but somebody had like a damn near perfect movie replica like right as you kind of went in towards the entrance near the large inflatable stay puffed so yeah at first you're like oh is that it and you're like no that one's actually over there by ghost corp so pretty cool seeing that for sure um, and then seeing how they have the little hook and ladder shop set up over there on the lot you know just to have shop being set up there as the entrance to ghost core yeah yeah it was pretty awesome and then um, a lot of people were taking photos on the driver's side of the Ectos, the way they were parked. Um, but they had, uh, uh, what do you call it? Velvet rope and, uh, 
kind of blocking it off. So we took photos from the other side of it. So there was no rope in between the car. So, you know, you're up on the passenger side. You could basically walk right up the car and touch the car. It was fucking amazing. Yep. So anyone that gets to do that regularly, I'm totally jealous of. So, but seeing that there was pretty amazing. Yeah. I'm really jealous of the people that used to get to work the universal studio show and drive their Ecto. Oh, totally. For sure. But, But I mean, I guess there's people in franchises that can do that. So, they're not jealous of that, but still. <laughs> just being the, I, I mean, I would love to just go be the guy who impersonates Doc Brown all day in front of the DeLorean. I'm sure that would have been a hell of a job. <laughs> so, yeah. So I as think- Fan Fest goes on, we see that, and then Jason Reitman and Ivan Reitman, like, have a good conversation about it, and... Uh, if you've seen Jason's movies, right, you know he's a he's a talented filmmaker, and he talked about for the longest time never wanting to do a Ghostbusters movie, and kind of talks about why he decided to want to do it, and what made him want to get into it, and all these panels and stuff that you haven't been able to see, most of them are available to stream online, so just get on YouTube and look them up. If you're a Ghostbusters fan at all, I would highly check recommend checking it out. So much good footage out there. And everyone did some really cool stuff too. Like, uh, yes, have some podcasts, did some behind the scenes things where they were in Ghost Corps and got inside the Ecto One. And yeah, just check that stuff out because that's pretty incredible. So, um, after that, the last thing that uh, they kind of ended Fan Fest with was the uh, Ray Parker Jr. concert. Yep. He uh he did a good job, you know. He played Ghostbusters to kind of open it, and then played some other tunes, and then he did his extended version of Ghostbusters. And yeah, it was like just a dance party. A lot of people were starting to clear out, and like we just we just parted all the way till they're done playing music, basically. Yeah, pretty much. And, and then uh, uh, then there then there was an after party nearby. So yeah, that was cool. Yeah, we went and checked that out and uh, hung out with a lot of fans there. So. Just crazy seeing that. So, like, the Ghostbusters North, we got to meet. Um, they're doing a ecto-cooler resurgence uh, documentary video. So, check that out. Those guys have some trailers for that up, some some social media up around that. And it's pretty cool seeing that and seeing all these people I know now and seeing the cool stuff they're doing. It just makes it that much better to see, like, our peer group doing awesome stuff out there in their communities and um, you know, just getting to know them a little bit more. So like the next time we can see everybody somewhere, maybe, uh, I don't know if there's going to be a film premiere or not in March of next year. Um, uh, but hopefully for Dragon Con 2021, PKE surge will be pretty badass and pretty big. So hopefully we'll get a run into a lot of those familiar faces again for that. Yep. I'm definitely going to be hitting that up. And if there's any way possible, it'd be awesome to go to that film premiere, but you know, Dreams. Absolutely. So we do have a special guest coming up. Like I said, Tony was not able to make it because uh, work comes first for a man that hasn't been able to work due to COVID. So I'm happy he's out there. But uh, I'll let you bring us up to speed on our guest. Our uh, <laughs> guest today is uh, Philip Wilburn. Uh, he's known for doing Trump impersonations. Uh, I know. Because recently I was on Cameo, and I saw him on there. <laughs> uh, he's... I do a lot of Cameo these days. <laughs> yeah, it, it seemed so. You were quite popular up on there. Uh, one of the very most popular uh, impressionists on there. It was quite funny to see here just, just your face pop up there. Uh, so I know you've done uh, Jimmy Kimmel Live, Conan, How I Met Your Mother, Dragon Ball Z, Loop on the Third, Yu Yu Hakusho, all sorts of stuff for Funimation, and all sorts of other short films and uh, stuff like that, and work with a lot of different comedians and websites and stuff so philip wilburn he's our guest today we met him uh at fan fest last year which was uh what we're talking about today but um it was pretty funny i bend over to tie my uh my boot and i think that's when you saw me (laughs) yeah well it was i think uh correct me if i'm wrong but you might have been tying your boot you might have also been you don't smoke, do you? You don't smoke, correct, or do you? No. So I guess it was – I can't remember what it was, but it had this image of 
Like I just kind of saw you there with the car and the the fire hydrant in the background. Oh, you know what? You might have been drinking water or something, but it just looked like you had been spent, and it looked like the perfect Ghostbuster photo. And I was like, hold on, you gotta you gotta have this photo. It just looked too cool. So I was like, I, and I rarely do that, but it was just like, oh my gosh, everything is coming together in this moment. We have to, you have to record this. So yeah. it was just such an amazing, such an amazing day, and such an amazing um, meeting in that one moment of of something. You never know what's going to happen in the end. Yeah, yeah. I thought that was pretty awesome. That you know, you come up and you, you know, you see this moment, and obviously seeing your background, you're like, oh, okay, this makes sense. Uh, and seeing that now, that you're able to have that vision there, right? You know, as a producer and, and working in production and working with other talent you see those moments right and you understand what they are so you didn't want to well, you didn't want to lose out on that moment I love you know I don't I don't love all the uh weirdness of social media but I like all the um the moments and cool things you can do with social media and people love like seeing things that they love you know yeah. They that, that people get to experience, and there were so many things going on right now at that moment, and I was so Ghostbuster overloaded that I was just like, "Oh my God, we got to capture this! You got to have this for you." So it's it was great. It was a great photo. So yeah, it's uh, I posted it up on my Instagram and I credit it to you afterwards, and uh, <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. It's funny because um, one of the first po pictures I posted for this podcast on our podcast page was a <clears throat> picture of me and Justin and uh, Maurice Lamarge. And then, oh, hey, who's that in the background? That's right. I was getting, I think we were getting ice cream or something because I remember it was hot as everything. And I think we were all getting something cool to drink. And I was in the background of you guys doing that. So it was really funny. Yeah, that yeah, was... You, you kept up with us there later on so let me ask you this <laughs> that's right so yep. what what brought you out to ghostbusters fan fest that day so let me tell you my movies that have influenced my life they're probably the three most influential movies in my life were Smokey and the bandit back to the future and ghostbusters and i love ghostbusters so much i mean you don't even you don't even know how much i love ghostbusters <laughs> and when i was in high school um, Ghostbusters had just come out of the movies and I had seen it several times and um, there was a uh, I was in band and a nerd and but I was also in uh, in my senior year I always wanted to be on TV I always wanted to do comedy I always wanted to act and uh, and but I'd never done anything really with it I just I was in East Texas um, it was not something you did, so I didn't think too much about it. But my la senior year, I took a class that was half speech and half theater. And the speech teacher was the drill team instructor, which is weird. But they decided to do Ghostbusters for their for the high school football games. And mm -hmm. so what that entailed was all the girls were in these things called jazz bags, that were just colored bags that were spandex and they would make shapes and stuff like that. And then they needed three Ghostbusters. And so she knew what a cut up I was and she said, Hey, would you and your two buddies like to be the Ghostbusters for me? And I said, Would I? So we went and we bought Army that you couldn't go and get Ghostbuster costumes. So we went and got Army flight suits. My mom made felt. Uh, Ghostbuster patches because you couldn't just order Ghostbuster patches back then. Right. And my dad, there was the uh, there was a magazine. I think it was Popular Mechanics that had the uh, Ghostbuster backpack on it. And I went and bought it. And my dad was an appliance repairman. And I said, "Hey, Dad, make this." So my backpack was probably about forty or fifty pounds because it was made of washing machine parts. Mm -hmm. But uh, I ran around the football field as Peter Vinkman all day long and for a whole season of football instead of having to play my instruments. And it was the best senior year I'd ever had. So it was just great. It was just great. That's yeah. awesome. So hearing that story, like, is so much of that reminds me, you know, just of watching Stranger Things and getting those nostalgic vibes of, like, hey, here's these homemade costumes. Because, you know, I did the same thing. Like, my first Ghostbusters costume was, oh, man, probably in 2000. 
nine, I went down to one of the local military surplus stores there and, you know, just bought, you know, a flight suit there and kind of pieced everything together. And I remember my, my name badge was like hand drawn. Uh, the, That's you know, awesome. Able to get the patch online then, but, you know, to have that felt patch and, like, you know, that's how they made it for the movie. So, like, the fact that you had something so authentic is pretty impressive and pretty incredible to have that. Do you have pictures of that still? Oh, yeah, and I still have it. And as a matter of fact, um, I was home last year, and I'd been really working on um, losing weight, stuff like that. And so (laughs) it was so funny. I was like, I wonder if I can still fit in this stuff. And I did, and it was amazing. It was hilarious. It was a little tight. I'm not going to joke, but it was hilarious. I was like, look what I did. So it was just very funny. It was very funny that I still had it. And I don't know where the backpack is. The backpack's probably in a, a shed someplace, but but the uh, costume we kept, and uh, it's pretty funny. I'll send you I'll send you the photos. But That's the awesome. big the other thing about Fan Fest for me, and I don't even know if you know this. You might, but maybe maybe you forgot. Um, so years ago, like one of the things that one of my biggest accomplishments in life was I loved Saturday Night Live so much, and I got to audition for Saturday Night Live like three times. And I didn't get it, which, but there's a lot of people that didn't get it. But, you know, uh, but I've been to uh, Studio 8H and stood on that stage and met Lauren Michaels right there. And so, you know, there's a lot of of Saturday Night Live history in Ghostbusters. And so... um. So there was a lady that helped me get my first audition. Her name was Ann Beats, and she was one of the first writers for SNL. She used to write the nerd sketches with Gilda and Bill and a bunch of different bunch, bunch of different things. And she actually created an 80s TV show called Square Pegs years later with Sarah Jessica Parker was the star. And um, But one of the things that's really interesting about it was I – after I got that Ghostbuster, after I got to, you know, go to SNL, I would get calls from Ann Beats all the time saying, hey, Philip, I need you to fix this. Or, hey, Philip, can you come move this? Or, hey, this, so they that. And so, of course, every single time I was like, I'll be right there. And so one day she was getting rid of stuff. And she said, oh, look what I found. And she hands me this thing. And it's just a piece of cardboard. And I'm like, What is this? And she says, why don't you read it? And it says on there, main way bag of glass. And it is the famous sketch with Dan Aykroyd and um, and Candace Bergen about the dangerous toys. And it's the actual prop from Saturday Night Live from the second season, I think, seventh episode of Saturday Night Live. It's like a historical history piece and she showed it to me and we put it away and stuff like that so i was talking to some of my comedy buddies and they asked me they said did you steal it and i went no i didn't steal it (laughs) absolutely (laughs) they thought it would be funny if i had stolen it and i sold and that and she laughed at that story and so like a few weeks later was my birthday and she gave me that for my birthday and it is the actual prop from the main way bag of glass sketch on saturday night live with dan Aykroyd. And Candace Bergen. And that really was the essence for me going to Ghostbuster Fest because I had this prop and I wanted to get Dan Aykroyd to sign it. And so I stood in line um, at the main line and they said, oh, he's just not signing anything. So I went and bought the autograph ticket. So I didn't get to do any of the fun meet and greets or anything like that. I just bought a ticket for this. And as soon as I got to almost to the front of the line, he left and went to do something else. And so the lady who I talked to, who I told about buying the ticket, grabbed me, put me into another line for the K-Swiss special Ghostbusters shoe. And she went up to some guys. I think they were from Colorado in a Ghostbusters club. And she goes, I'm going to make sure you get signed, but you have to adopt this guy. And so that's how I got my main way bag of glass from Saturday Night Live signed by Dan Aykroyd. And it was uh, great. You know, I've right. run Ghostbusters for so long and Ghostbusters Fest was kind of one of the best times I've ever had. I wish I had got to do some of the stuff you guys did because it looked like you had just the best time going to the screening the night before, going to the hotel where they shot it. I mean, everything was pretty amazing. So, And I'm glad that the Ghostbuster Fest brought us together. So thanks for having me today, and I hope we can chat again very soon. So if people want to find you on social media or 
follow some some of your stuff, maybe check out a comedy sketch, where can they find you at online? You can find me on Instagram, on Twitter, on Facebook, on Cameo as Philip Wilburn. So look me up. Uh, thanks, guys. Thanks so much for having me. Oh, yeah, I'm on Cameo a lot. I usually play this guy. It's a lot of stuff. You know, the Frog Brothers podcast is the greatest podcast in the world. You know, I was talking to Dr. Fauci the other day. Dr. Fauci even said that he loves this podcast so much. A lot of deep cuts. <laughs> a lot of deep cuts. You guys are making podcasts great again. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks for having me. I hope to see you again soon. Excellent. So go out there and check out his comedy. Check out his impersonations. Go get yourself a cameo. It'll be top notch. Highly recommended. So that's uh that's kind of what we're wrapping up with here on the episode. So uh, what are your final thoughts, Alan? Um. So you know, next week we're gonna be back with probably a more traditional style episode with all our regular segments. But we are gonna be trying to do kind of just different stuff like this every now and again. Uh, you know, with the new movie coming out and everything, and Ghostbusters date being delayed, it's a little difficult to say what's on the horizon for everything right now, but uh, as far as Ghostbusters goes, you know, we almost, when we talked about starting a podcast, it <laughs> clearly Ghostbusters was one of the main things we wanted to talk about. However, we recognize that there are already other Ghostbusters themed podcasts and we didn't want to just be another voice in that because we already enjoy the voices that talk about Ghostbusters a lot we are fans of those people yeah um, so very excellent here so I think we wanted to just branch out and do things a little bit on our own like right with some of the movie reviews we're doing you know there's some things there so we're trying to trying to break it up but obviously you know, number one, our number one fandom for me, anyways, Ghostbusters. Like hands down, like people say, what's your favorite movie? And it's like, well, no questions asked. It's Ghostbusters. Yeah, people are actually shocked that I say Ghostbusters so quickly when they ask me that. You know, yeah, They're just like, oh, you you actually know what your favorite movie is? Because usually people are like, oh, I don't know, uh, Shawshank Redemption, Forrest Gump. Like, I think those are very popular answers. Which good movies, but yeah, good movies, but you know, not the same level of uh, fandom there for us. So. Definitely appreciate everyone tuning in and listening, and to everyone out there celebrating Ghostbusters Day, we hope you had an amazing day. We hope everyone's doing great in their communities. Um, if you're out there protesting, be safe, be kind to each other. I think that's one thing I've really appreciated the last couple weeks is seeing how willing people are to be to be there for each other, to help each other, and hopefully, you know, see people on every side of the situation come through and, and make some changes in their lives and how they treat people and, and work with people to come off on a better spot and you know for me one of the things I love about this fandom and Ghostbusters specifically and Harold Ramis mentions it you know in the commentary on the first Ghostbusters is that teachers used to love when kids would play Ghostbusters because they're teaming up you know, like, there's not good guys and bad guys like everyone's a Ghostbuster and you're catching pretend ghosts and yeah. it's all inclusive and I think that's one of the things about this fandom that I really truly find inspiring is that everyone can you know pretend to be a Ghostbuster or get into being a Ghostbuster and cosplay as a Ghostbuster or make a proton pack right and it's very inclusive to everybody out there so everyone can relate to some degree so I think to me like that's just a kind of way to wrap it up into current events is that you know, everyone can relate to be somebody, and you know that's the kind of world I want to be in. It's like an inclusive place where you can be yourself, but we can all have some overlap and appreciate the same thing. So, uh, take care of yourselves, and uh, we will catch you guys next week with another episode. Uh, yep. All right. I gotta have a shower. Oh, Dana, it's you. These are my dinner guests, the Frog Brothers. The, the, the Frog Brothers. Frog Brothers. These are my dinner guests, Frog Brothers. The, the, the Frog Brothers. Frog Brothers. These are my dinner guests, the Frog Brothers. The, the, the Frog Brothers. Frog Brothers. These are my dinner guests, Frog Brothers. The, the, the Frog Brothers. Frog Brothers.